In the last few videos we've been taking a look at the various zoom lenses that are available for the Fuji uh, X-T system and in today's video I'm going to talk to you about why I chose to use the 18 to 135 lens. I'll see you after this. As I've said on many occasions on this channel, my main walking around lens is the 18 to 135. And I did want to take some time out because I've talked an awful lot about Fuji lenses in the past to tell you why instead of choosing one of the other zoom lens options or, or maybe some prime options, I've chosen this super zoom instead as my main lens. When I first got into photography, I was using a Canon uh, 350D. And uh, I have a video on that channel where I took the Canon 350D out. Um, that was last year, so that was in 2019. And I took pictures to see how that particular camera would handle life in the 2020s. And you know what? Didn't do a bad job. It's a, it's a nice camera even now. It's very cheap. If you wanted to pick one up, you could pick one up fairly easily. But it's an APS-C camera. And possibly more importantly, the lens that I have for it is an 18 to 135. So my very first foray into doing anything with photography was with a lens that was 18 to 135. I'm very, very used to that focal range. So when I chose to go with the Fuji system, I had two choices. I could get one really good lens um, that, that would that would be it. I wouldn't be able to afford anything else. Uh, or I could get the super zoom, the 18 to 135, or I could get the two zooms, the 18 uh, to 55 and the uh, 50 to 230. Well, my, my intention all along was to pick up the 50 to 200 eventually and to get the uh, 18 to 55 to do video with. So I didn't really want to go and buy the um, 50 to 230 because uh, uh, it's not as as good a lens. And I, I thought, well, I, I could probably do better. And when dad got his camera, we were looking at lenses for his camera and came across this 18 to 135. And it's, you know what? It's a lens that nobody talks about but it's absolutely phenomenal. In fact, I think this is one of the best zoom lenses I've ever seen. <laughs> Super zooms in particular, I should say. Uh, I used to have an 18 to 300, it was a great lens, but it just, it was always a little bit soft for me. This thing is, is sharp as anything, it's really good. I've done some tests with it between 18 and uh, 55 and I've done the same things on the 18 to 55 lens and actually in terms of sharpness you can't tell the difference. The only benefit of course of having the 18 to 55 lens is that it's uh, a 2.8 to 4 whereas the 18 to 55 starts at 3.5. But you'll notice that the majority of videos that I do on this channel are actually with that 18 to 135 because the focal range on it is absolutely phenomenal. If you want to do landscape photography, you need a lens uh, that can go in a little bit further, that can that can grab things that are a bit further away. Now, of course, I've got access to the 50 to 230 because I inherited that lens. But even without that, there wasn't really a shot that I could find that I couldn't get with the 18 to 135. And people who are aware of the rest of the Fuji uh, range will also know that there is a 50 to 140, which does very much the same sort of focal range, but is twice the price, something like that. It's a ridiculously expensive lens, fantastic build quality, fantastic optics and everything, but it is an awful lot more. Uh, the 18 to 135 is an XF lens and it's built like an XF lens. It does absolutely everything that you would expect of a Fuji lens. And I swear to God, this is better than any other super zoom lens that I've seen before. Any other 18 to 135 or any other 18 to 200 or 300 that I've seen used, which is surprised me, to be honest. I wasn't really expecting that when I first saw the lens. And in fact, it's the X-T3 with the combination of that lens that made me go and pick up an X-T3 with the combination of that lens. Because I did try it out. I tried out my dad's camera. Uh, we went to Tewkesbury. Uh, I got a picture of some ducks, some swans. I got a picture of uh, some of the things that you will see in the Tewkesbury video. And you know what? 
I loved it. I, I it was so good. The the you if you shoot on Fuji anyway, you'll know the process of shooting with a Fuji camera. It feels a bit different. It feels a bit more real somehow. I don't know than using just a DSLR, which has just got some little flappy buttons and things, and you you know you move those around and you get a, a picture. It doesn't mean the pictures are any better. But the pictures are better for other reasons as well. I love the colours on, on Fuji stuff. It just looks phenomenal. Anyway, there's an awful lot of Fuji love going on on this channel at the moment. It will stop at some point, but right now I'm kind of enjoying it. Um, so, yes, that's why I chose the 18-135. to 135. And I would like to know why you chose your main lens, the, the lens that you take everywhere uh, with you in the comments below if you've got a, a few minutes. Um, Quite apart from the quality of the 18-135, to I did think at the time, and actually subsequently the tests that I've done have kind of borne this out, that between 18 and 55 I was kind of covered with the, with the, the bigger lens. And between 50 to 135 at least, I would have a much sharper lens than the XC lens, uh, the 50 to 230. And actually, as it turns out, that is the case. The 18 to 135, it's not quite as sharp as the 50 to 200, but it's damn close. And actually, it's a lot closer than the um, 50 to 230. So if you're looking for a big range, if you want a single lens that you can just grab and take anywhere with you, that's possibly the lens for it. The one drawback with it, I suppose, is the uh, the weight of the camera. It does make the camera uh, a bit heavier because it's a bigger lens, but you don't have any of those problems where you get into the middle of the day and you go, oh, I've got the wrong lens on or you see something and it's happening right in front of you and you've got too long a lens on and you know you've you've got you've got it there you've got 90% of what you do with your camera is in that particular zoom range and it's phenomenal every single video that I've done on this channel with the Fuji cameras apart from the ones where I've mentioned what lenses I'm using they've been done using that lens I've got some phenomenal landscape photography with that lens. I've got some brilliant, um, I haven't done portraiture yet, but I've got a couple of good wildlife shots um, that I did with that lens as well at a zoo. Uh, now, that is one of the places where the reach is going to have a problem. Uh, you, you do want a bigger lens if you're going to do that kind of reach thing. Uh, but you can still go to a zoo and you can get some nice shots. And if you're happy to kind of crop things down a bit in post if you're not going to use it to print if you just want it for the internet for example then you can get some perfectly fine shots with that particular lens all in all and i know not many people are going to say this i think that the 18 to 135 is the fuji lens that is most underrated it is absolutely fantastic not quite as sharp as the top of the range lenses the top of the top of the range lenses but it was never going to be it is sharper than the XC lenses that I've seen so far. And because of that, it makes such a good companion when you're out in the field. And if you've got a chance to try it, you don't have to go and buy one. You know, if you just have a chance to try it, then I would urge you to give it a go and see what you think yourself. Anyway, that's it for this particular video. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you do, please give it a big thumbs up. Uh, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon at the end and the all notifications tab that pops up as well. Until next time, thanks ever so much for coming along and I will see you in the next video. And of course, until then, don't forget, keep taking those photos.